Hey guys, Ivan here, and how about we start this one with a posing video of Larry Wills and Brandon Curry. The strongest bodybuilder in the world, not a professional bodybuilder, but a bodybuilder, and the best bodybuilder in the world this year? Well, it's left to see. Anyways, these guys posed together and of course they trained before and we're gonna see a video about that I'm sure very soon, but as for now we have this little posing video and this photo as well. Of course, you're not gonna compare their physiques because Brandon is probably our Mr. Olympia and uh, Larry Wills not even a pro bodybuilder, not even close to pro bodybuilder, but he's holding his own, like from the sheer muscularity standpoint, he's not being dwarfed, he looks big, he's also much taller and he's out angling Brandon, so he's holding his own, he's looking big next to him, surprisingly big, but of course if it was a bodybuilding competition it wouldn't be even funny. But you know what, let's have some fun, let's just compare them a little bit, just a little bit. So if you take a look at Brandon's chest, it's much much fuller, and if you take a look at the Brandon's triceps compared to Larry's triceps, it's a huge difference, Brandon's triceps are just so much bigger, and about their biceps, not that big of a difference, honestly, I mean at least from this angle, especially after Larry had that bicep tear, his bicep is looking bigger, I don't know about Sintel, but some people say it's used for regeneration purposes, if you know anything about that, educate me, I have no idea, honestly, but maybe he's using Sintel to help him regenerate his biceps faster, actually a bicep on new one, of course. I mean, Larry Wills is not even a serious bodybuilder, he competed once, I believe, maybe multiple times, but his profession is powerlifting and he is incredibly strong, like seriously, very, very strong. And if you compare their legs here, it's not that big of a difference, although Larry is also known as Larry No Wills. <laughs> Some people name him that because his legs are also bad, but Brandon's legs here look suspiciously small. I mean, I expected them to be a little bit bigger based on those progress photos, but I guess you're not gonna see much improved legs from Brandon. Will his 2019 R Classic edition be enough to win him Mr. Olympia? Probably yeah, probably yes. But will we see much improved and complete physique from Brandon? No, no, his legs are not gonna be that good. Not his calves, not his quads, probably not his hamstrings or glutes. By the way, back to Larry Wills, if you are a Larry Wills follower, what is up with his smile? Why is he smiling like this? Is this kind of a joke or something? I don't think he smiles like this naturally. He looks like he's skydiving, actually. I don't know what is up with that. If you guys know, tell me. But back to Brandon, you can see his most recent physique update, in which he's looking tremendous. He's looking amazing. He's so full. He's very, very lean. He's gonna bring that freakiness on another level at the Mr. Olympia, but apparently only as far as his upper body. His legs are not gonna be up to part, no, no, I don't think they will be as good as his upper body, not even close, but his upper body is really something special. This kind of aesthetics, this, this kind of symmetry, this kind of waist, this kind of uh, perfectly proportionate and, and uh, symmetrical abs, and uh, this developed with small waist, without bubble gut, with this kind of separations, separations in shoulders, with arms this big and shaped like this, and with that back too, I mean, just, I'm really amazed. I really love his physique, and I'm looking forward to seeing him at the Mr. Olympia, but I'm really sorry that he is not complete. And that's a huge minus, that's a huge flaw, I really hate that. As much as I love his upper body, that's how much I hate the fact that he's not complete. I noticed that many people can't even notice that his legs are smaller or not as defined, as detailed, but it is obvious, it's obvious, I can see it, but this upper body is just too dominant for him to lose. I mean, if we had Sean Roden again, as he was in 2018, but, you know, without super freaky upper body like Brandon here, although with good legs, I honestly don't know who would I go with. As much as I'm impressed with Brandon's upper body, he's definitely not complete, and Sean is, pretty much. His upper body is fine, but his legs are very good. So, I don't know who would I go with, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the Mr. Olympia, um, let's just cut the speculation right here. Talking about Sean Roden, he just made this post, and actually he made another post after this one, but it doesn't matter, the point is, it doesn't seem like he's giving up. It doesn't seem like it. He says, I didn't come this far to be average. And in the description of this photo, he says, I'm better today, than it was yesterday, and a hashtag the best is yet to come, unleash your greatness. So he's banned from Mr. Olympia, but that doesn't mean he's not gonna compete this year at other professional bodybuilding, IFBB Pro shows, 
and we very well may see him at this new rock show since it is very well paid the money price is really high and after all these uh, law issues and uh, court expenses Sean definitely does need more money so I think we will see him at that show maybe even some post Olympia shows he is not banned from IBB he's only banned from Mr. Olympia maybe not even that maybe they will actually retreat that ban maybe they will let him compete because it seems like he is competing I don't know which show is he competing at is it gonna be Mr. Olympia are they gonna let him compete we'll see in about 25 days from now anyways let's go with the next thing and uh, that's big Ramy jumping in a pool <laughs> Just a quick little funny video Dennis James posted today. Back then, a couple of years ago, when Big Ramy came up, he was coached by Dennis James. He was coached by pretty much any coach, any top coach in the bodybuilding industry. And he posted this video of Big Ramy jumping. <laughs> but let me play this video with the audio so you can hear how it sounds when a 350-pound bodybuilder jumps in the pool. Come on, big jump. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> okay i'll give you a five five point five <laughs> all i'm thinking about is how that board didn't break <laughs> anyways big Ramy was huge at the time he wasn't as conditioned as he was later in 2017 for example but i think this was one of the best years big Ramy had in his career dennis james really made him look kind of freaky and full his arms seemed a little bit bigger than they are today for some reason. His overall physique seemed more aesthetic and yeah, aesthetic. I, I like this physique. I really like it. I mean, he's huge. He's insanely big, but I think it was more aesthetic than he is today. I don't know. Some people like me can find Big Ramy's physique aesthetic, but some people find something like this more aesthetic. If you were wondering what Jeff said or how I pronounce his name actually is doing right now, this is his physique. This is his current shape and he was always claiming natty status. He was always saying that he was natural. I didn't believe him back then when he was just a teenager and looked more impressive than most teenagers in the world. He was well shaped. He really had those genetics, very aesthetic physique, but I don't think he was really natural back then. Right now, I think he is. He definitely does look natural right now. He's not as big, he's not as full, he's not as conditioned or as vascular. I'm sure he's eating fine and training a lot, but not training that hard anymore. And um, he's looking great, he's looking nice, but not as impressive as he once was. But let's move on to somebody who is way more relevant than Jeff said. Jeff is just nobody anymore in the industry, but somebody who is very important and who is four weeks out of Mr. Olympia Classic physique and who I think is going to win this show at least I thought so up until this point and I'm not sure anymore since he tore his hamstring so this is a video that uh, Chris Bumstead made he says uh, I tore my hamstring Tavage chest workout four weeks out and um, here is a video here's actually a photo of his hamstring so it's bruising it's bruising and that doesn't mean that it's fine he definitely pulled it at least Based on what he said, it's most likely not a tear. It, he did not really tear it, but he pulled it a little. It happens. It happened to me once, and I got I recovered in like two weeks or so. So he has enough time to recover from this. I hope everything will be fine, and I hope it's not going to be visible at the Mr. Olympia. I hope he will be as he was supposed to be all these years, and uh, if he actually shows up, fine, like perfect, you know, without any obvious flaws like water retention or torn muscles, I think he will win the Mr. Olympia. The conditioning is definitely coming together, he's getting grainy as we speak. He said that he never trained his uh, abs directly before and in this prep he's training them and it is visible, it is definitely visible. That's one of the criticism that he received. For example, uh, Brian Ainsley was criticized for not being able to hit vacuum and Chris was able to hit one of the best vacuums ever but he never really showed great abdominal development. And I think that's gonna change this year since he's training his abs very hard and they look much better here. So we'll see, we'll see what the package Chris brings. Anyways, he has a lot of freaky body parts and a lot of freaky parts of his structure that will allow him to beat Brian's completeness, in my opinion. You already know these guys if you are subscribers of this channel. 
Talking about hamstrings, can you guess whose hamstrings are these? Is this a 212 bodybuilder? Is this an open bodybuilder? Oh yeah, you can see the face right there between his knees. That's a rush rock bar, believe it or not. Yep, that's a rush. He definitely improved his legs quite a bit. Quite a bit. I mean, that's his weakness. Especially quads. Not so much hamstrings, but quads. But this year, he definitely improved his quads quite a bit. And now, his hamstrings are looking crazy. And the conditioning is coming together. He's gonna be lean. Lean and mean. And I think he has very good chance to actually crack the top three. To beat Brion or Chris, not very likely. Not very likely, in my opinion. Here is another very recent photo of his and uh, he looks huge. He looks like an open bodybuilder or at least 212. Let's be real. Is this looking much less impressive from, let's say, Guy Cisternino's side chest or Zane Watson's? No, I don't think so. He looks very impressive and maybe he should actually switch to open or uh, 212. I don't know if he has a structure for it. His back is not very good genetically. Neither are his quads. But his chest and his arms and uh, this pose in particular looks very good. It looks bodybuilding open class like. And here is a physique update of somebody who is actually an open class bodybuilder who just competed at the Portugal Pro taking 6th place in the open class. And he is also a classic physique Olympian. That's right. His name is Henry Pierano. And right here is his most muscular pose and he definitely looks huge. He looks like an open class bodybuilder rather than a classic physique guy, let's be real. He's probably gonna be one of the biggest guys up there. And as you can notice, Brion Ensley is a previous 212 competitor. That's where he turned pro. You also have Chris Bumstead, who was pro, who turned pro in the open class. Yeah, not 212, open. And here you have this guy, who also turned pro in open class. You also have George Peterson, last year's third place finisher, who is also from 212, I believe. Now, fifth place is uh, Arash Bar, who never competed in uh, bodybuilding before. He was previously a man's physique competitor. And this year, he's gonna have to battle these guys. These guys are beasts, and I don't think he can beat them. Talking about bodybuilders that turned to classic physique, we're gonna see something opposite right here. So, Stanimal, previously known as man's physique competitor, now known as a classic physique competitor, Right now, he's competing at the Mr. Olympia for the second time this year. He's in a prep mode currently. He basically just announced retiring from Classic Physique right here in the comment section. Probably not the best way to do it. Maybe he said it on his YouTube channel. I don't know, it's in French. So this guy asked him, will this be your last contest? And he says in Classic Physique, yes. Next year, it's open class. And I think that's a great idea for him. He started getting a little bit too veiny and grainy, too, too big, probably, for, for classic. This guy really trains like a beast. He's really training very, very intensely and he's very focused. He's really a bodybuilder through and through. I watched him uh, prepping last year with Sean Roden and I watched him train and he trains very hard with a lot of focus and intensity. And this year you can see him, he got a lot of... Not only muscle, yeah, he got bigger, but he got uh, a lot of veins, especially through his upper chest and shoulders. He started looking a little bit too freaky for classic. I don't know, me personally, I prefer to see more uh, aesthetically pleasing physiques at the Mr. Olympia classic physique stage, not super freaky ones. And uh, Stanimal, as you can see right here, these veins are a little bit too much. It's too freaky, it's not uh, aesthetic, right? I love to see this, I love freakiness. I'm an open class uh, bodybuilding fan more so than I am of classic. I am really amazed by Ronnie Coleman's and Phil Heath's and Jake Cutler's and Dorian Yates, but right here you can see Stanimal getting too freaky for classic. And I'm really happy to see him in the open. I hope he will do well. Talking about open class bodybuilders, we must not forget but to mention 212 bodybuilder. So these guys are also bodybuilders. They're just too short to be in the open class. And here is Derek Lansford. Most likely, I think it's like obvious at this point that he's gonna win 212 Mr. Olympia, uh, rowing some uh, weights, and you can see his back. It just looks outstanding, outstanding, very, very complete. I would say head to toe, but but in this case, it's probably more fitting to say head to glutes, <laughs> right? But also, he has great lower body as well. But in this video right here, we cannot really see it, but. Yeah, very complete back, a lot of density in his uh, traps, 
lower lats, spinal erectors, shoulders, everything is on point. Really extraordinary back, really, really good back. I need to watch his videos to find out how he got it this big. He trains in MI40 gym, so I'm sure he learned a lot from Ben Pokolsky. Ben was known for having horrible back, but those guys are the ones you should be asking for advice, because they invested more thoughts and more uh, time in learning how to develop a good back. Ronnie Coleman never really cared about it, he just lifted some heavy weights and his back grew. Guys like Ben, who didn't have great back genetics, had to learn more about it, and Ben Pakulski is one of the smartest guys in the industry, definitely one of the most educated ones, and if he taught uh, Derek how to develop his back, props to him, because this back is world class. Now, for the end of this video, yeah, the end is near, I'm sorry guys, and now you're thinking, how did this video finish so fast, because it's very good video. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. This right here is, uh, I hope I will not butcher his name, Michael Crizo or Crizo. Anyways, he won the Arnold Classic South Africa, and as you guys may know, IFBB has split to two federations, to uh, IFBB Pro League, which is uh, most shows in America and some other shows around the world, and you also have uh, IFBB Pro, Elite Pro, actually. And Michael Crizo, I hope that's how you pronounce his name, is competing in the Elite Pro. And I don't know what the hell is this guy doing over there. If he competed in the Pro League, I'm sure in a matter of, I don't know, maybe a year or so, he could be at the Mr. Olympia, right? Would you agree? I mean, based on these photos, you can check him out. He has an Instagram account, a lot of very freaky photos, and he looks like much, much better than any other guy standing next to him. He's annihilating the lineups. And, I'm, and my best assumption, my best guess would be that uh, IVB Elite Pro is paying him a lot of money to stay there because they need somebody like this to represent them. If this guy went to uh, IVB Pro League, he would do great, I'm sure. But then IVB Elite Pro would be left with a bunch of mediocre competitors. And I'm sure that this guy would do maybe even top 6 at the Mr. Olympia in a couple of years time, right? Because he has everything. He has that uh, black dude genetics. He has a lot of freaky body parts and a lot of fullness. And he's very, very round for a white guy. It's just too crazy. I can't even... I don't really see any other white guys looking this impressive. Right now, especially in the world. We don't have something like this. He's very complete head to toe. Only thing that he would need to work on is conditioning. And honestly, I hope he will transfer to Pro League. I don't know what the hell is he doing in Elite Pro. No matter how much money they're paying him, there is no Mr. Olympia. I'm sure they're paying him a lot of money to stay there, and yeah, money is important for sure, but there is no glory. Mr. Olympia is something else, and I think you should focus on Pro League. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about anything in this video? Whatever you want to talk about, tell me down below in the comment section. I always read all the comments. I don't reply to all of them because I don't have enough time, there is too many of them, but I check them out. I check them all out. And guys, subscribe to my channel because I'm posting videos every single day. If you're bored at home, you don't know what to do, you can always check my channel and there will be at least one video a day. So guys, subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, and all the best. Bye-bye.